I used to live in this little studio basement apartment underneath like a townhouse. And one day I was sleeping, deep sleep, all the lights pitch black, and I heard a pounding at the door. And you know, you know you could tell when something is an emergency. I heard like <laughs> And in one motion, I leapt from a deep sleep to my feet. And I was like, hello? <laughs> My heart was beating out of my chest, and I heard, Sal, it's Dave, open the door. Dave was my landlord. He's the guy that lived upstairs for me at the time, and uh, he was a big Irish dude. He was a New York City detective, and I stumbled in the dark to the door, and I cracked it open like this much, and the sun came, and I went, what's up? And he said, did you hear anything? And I said, no. And he goes, you didn't hear anything? And I said, no. What's up? And he goes, I just got home. My door upstairs is off the hinges. Somebody broke into my house, and I think they're still in there. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go? I pay you. You're gonna drag me into this, your tenant? I'm a straight up Seville. <laughs> he didn't even wait for a response. He walked away. Like, I'm gonna help him. So I threw on my terry cloth bathrobe <laughs> and my house slippers because I may be fighting a criminal in a few moments. <laughs> and I went to the front of the house. I don't know why I went. I shouldn't have gone. And I get to the front, and sure enough, I see the front door hanging off the middle hinge only, and it was chilling. And for a moment, I was like, oh, we sure this isn't the tooth fairy. <laughs> I don't want you to go in there and shoot my father. <laughs> JK, he's just a helper, so. <laughs> and we're standing there, and I don't know what to do, and in that moment, he reaches into his jacket, and he pulls out a gun, and he cocked it. Now, <clears throat> I know that you guys are from here. <laughs> but I'm from there. I'm not used to seeing a gun in front of my face, not, let alone cocked and ready to go. And in that moment, he says to me with a serious face, he goes, I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna secure the first floor. You get my back. <laughs> and I said to him, I'm your guy. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I'm not his guy. I'm nobody's guy. I'm barely a guy. <laughs> And he goes in, and the only way I could describe it is like what we see in TV and movies. I swear to God, he's technical, methodical. He's doing, he's doing this stuff. <laughs> I'm standing there like, I am very unclear of my role here. <laughs> I'm dressed like I'm waiting for a massage. <laughs> I couldn't do anything but repeat him. He was like, kitchen's clear. I'm like, kitchen's clear. <laughs> Closet is clear. I'm like, oh, clear in the closet. <laughs> and he comes up to me and he goes, I've canvassed the first floor. We're good down here. Now you and I have to go upstairs. And I was just like, I'm still your guy. And we start to go up the steps, and look, it is tense, man. And he is stone-faced, okay? He's been in this situation before. He is ready to act, okay? He's going up the steps. He's trying not even to make a creak, not one creak in the steps, okay? I am right behind him. <laughs> Head to toe South Park pajamas, terry cloth bathrobe. Again, I could only mimic him, so I'm just like, okay, I took my cues from him, so I'm just going up the stairs. <laughs> It looked like an episode of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> At one point, I swear to God, I even did this with my hand because I felt like I needed something. Maybe the robber would think I had a flesh pistol. I don't know. We get to the top of the steps. There's three doors up there. Two were open. One was a half bath. Not impressive. <laughs> 
The other was a spare bedroom, and then there was one closed door, which means, obviously, that if anyone is in the house, they have to be behind that door. And that means, obviously, that if something's going to happen, it's going to happen right now. I know we're laughing, but I want you to appreciate this. So if you could, for even one moment, try, try to put yourself in my slippers. <laughs> I have been awake for 70 seconds. <laughs> and I'm standing there like, how did I find myself here? <laughs> a minute and a half ago, I was with a bunch of girls at the beach. <laughs> and now I'm in a position where I could get shot. And I don't know what to do. And he leans in in that moment, he goes, He starts doing hand signals, <laughs> sign language, whatever you want to call it. But I was like, why would you believe that I could interpret this? Can we please go downstairs and tiptoe down there and whisper about it? And before I could communicate to him, that I don't know what I'm supposed to do. He turned and he kicked his own door open. It flew open and he ran in with the gun out like that. I got a surge of adrenaline I never felt before in my life. Something came through my body, up my toes, out the top of my head, and I involuntarily yelled, a pow pow! <laughs> I said. I said pow pow. First I said croutons. Now here I said pow pow. I made the sound of a gun. From cartoons. That's how I helped that man, onomatopoeia. So he gets shot. <laughs> no. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> he gets shot. I'm like, huh? <gasps> Pow! <laughs> My luck, there's a Nest Cam. The footage is on the news. I'm like, Pow! 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 He's laying there dead. Pow! Tonight at 11, local pussy shot dead making gun sounds. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So can you take us through what happened? Yes, I was, I pay him, and I was sleeping, and I wasn't getting a massage, and I love cartoons. Sir, this is live, can you cut to the chase? Yes, I said pow pow. <laughs> there was nobody in there. Could you imagine how emasculating that was for me in that moment? He, I watched him, he didn't even turn around for 10 seconds maybe. I just saw his back shaking like this. And then he just went, pow, pow. I was like, Dave, I did all that I could. Two weeks later, he raised my rent $50.